Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We're joined for the full hour with uh, Tim Alexander. Just give you a brief update report. I talked to Chris Harris this morning, our nuclear expert. That's his radio name, not his real name. He is working with KEPCO, which is the Korean... Uh, uh, nuclear program, which is similar to TEPCO in Japan. It turns out when he's done his research, though, they've done a lot of the same stupid mistakes in terms of safety, full, uh, uh, Taurus, uh, hydrogen release valve systems, the same problems that literally caused the disasters in Japan, and the same disasters here in America that are just waiting to happen with extreme weather, uh, super storms, coronal mass ejection causing power blackouts or earthquakes and volcanoes such as the New Madrid Fault superquake that could literally knock out 25 reactor sites and with one or more reactors. Right. So, in other words, he's discovering, and, and the, at least one thing about the Koreans is they're probably the most obsessive compulsive people on earth. They even don't obsess the Japanese or anybody else, which is good because that's why their industry like Samsung has risen to the top so quickly, and they're freaked out by the fact. That's why even in grocery stores in, in, in Korea, in Seoul, you can get a radiation detector and walk over to the fish counter and make sure your fish doesn't go click, click, click. That's today. <laughs> and within two weeks after that, the first people on earth weren't the Japanese. They were in denial. The Koreans, though, they actually had two clues. Radiation detectors were sitting there because they respect their people. They could walk down to the radiation detector, walk over to the fish counter, and if the fish smiled back to them and didn't go click, 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 it went into the, it got it wrapped up and put in their food basket. So, uh, go Koreans. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of you. So, you know, the fact that they're going to deal with this issue, and ultimately we need to get the pebble bed reactors, thorium is, fusion is reactors. Is online? Is, no, is he's not on today. No, he's not on today. I'm just doing a summary because he'll be back next week. He's totally wrapped up with doing the uh, Korean uh, KEPCO uh, protocol. So we got a full hour to cover a lot of good and bad stuff and to kind of just call it the way it is. Well, uh, let's start out uh, with the latest news on the uh, secret papal concave. Uh, the latest news out is that it will not start early next week, uh, as had been expected. Uh, the American Cardinals, there's 11 of them, and others are pushing for more information on the Vatican leak scandal, which saw the Pope's butler arrested and sent to prison, and then the Pope pardoned him, um, and all, uh, allegations of, of corruption and uh, the bank being used to launder money, some of it for the mafia, uh, for other things. At the high level in it, it, Italy, the conversions of many top uh, corporate officials, political leaders, uh, some of the church officials, uh, and the mafia. There, there, there's a you know uh, there's, a, there's a convergence in bed there. together. Yeah, there's three and, major and, and, issues. Uh, I want you to answer on this. There's three major issues we talked about before the show. The church needs to authorize to get rid of the thousand-year false, non-biblically based rule that priests need to be celibate. They need to allow absolutely. priests they to marry. Cannot, they cannot reform the now, church Number two, they, they, they got to clean up their financial order, which is like the Banco Ambrosio and the death on Brackfire's Bridge almost 20 years ago in London. They need to clean it up so they stop laundering money for the mafia and doing financial footsie with the globalists. And number three... They need to stop ecumenism with trying to create a dialectic with Islam and other non-Christian so-called faiths of Abraham, including Buddhism, so the World Council of Churches or their ecumenism put under Benedict. Uh, this needs to stop. We need to get back to Actually, biblical Christianity. Actually, John Paul II that really started a lot of that. I know he did, but, but, he, did, but did he carried the baton. The last, yeah, long yeah, before he became Pope, the Benedict came. The fact is that, that although the Catholics have strayed a lot, they could start to march back to work. Because interestingly, 80% of the new Christians on earth, believe it or not, are Catholic, especially in China. Well, this, and, is, this has been what I've been trying to say, and, and I filmed a, a YouTube video because I wanted it very public. And basically what I was calling for the first three or so minutes was, was saying, look, you know, we've got to, uh, you've got to eliminate mandatory celibacy uh, and, and reform, and you've got 50 to 60 percent of priests in many parts of the world are gay, 
And God loves gay people. God loves us all. But he didn't intend for his priesthood to be dominated by uh, a, gay, a gay clique. Uh, but then most yeah, it says of in the, the Bible that it's supposed to be a husband and one wife. Now, uh, it doesn't you know it doesn't mean that they're going to be perfect, but they have to be the husband and one wife. If they don't have their own family, how can they be right. a father and, of a church family? That's and it point. works because the Eastern Orthodox and the Eastern Rite of the Catholic Church, their priests are married, and it works, and it works quite well. And anybody that tells you it doesn't work either is ignorant uh, or, or simply lying. And because I've seen it up close. Now, yeah. uh, the, the rest of my, my YouTube video, which you can find, by the way, if you go to YouTube, um, a open video letter to the cardinal electors of the Roman Church, um, that uh, I, I say, look, the new pope could lead the fight against what the globalists are doing to this world. Oh, he world. can stop it right there. He literally has a bully pulpit that he could right. literally, with one speech nobody, in Rome, he could put an end to it tomorrow. the Pope can do that. If right. they get a real Christian who has guts, and pardon the language, but the balls to do something and stand up to these this tiny evil super elite that has us in a global depression that's about to explode into absolute economic chaos globally, who's yeah. driving us to the third world war militarily, which will get the most of us killed, uh, and absolute tyranny uh, for those that are, are, are allowed to survive in their high-tech satanic uh, global police state uh, the, that's the greatest moral imperative of our age is opposing that and right. most religions are silent about it you know I mean the, the mainstream media is owned by the globalists and everybody just kind of goes along a lot of individuals and people that listen to this show are aware of what's going on and, and, and at, a, at a certain level uh, even the majority of people are aware something is really rotten because people are buying well, guns in America uh, uh, every one and a half second somebody buys a gun in America now. People are right scared. Now. now, the most evil nation on earth, the most evil nation on earth is America. The next most evil nation is Israel. And third is, guess what? China. And China is so big. I would say North the Korea. Well, no, North Korea is is just insane. They're not even. They, yeah. We can't even call them insane. They're 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 beyond that. They're like a mad dog with rabies. And uh, to be honest, with the latest things that they're just because they're not getting food or aid, they're going to bomb America. The fact no, the you know what it really is. Well, I'm, we're getting off the the the, the point yeah. here, but let me yeah. tell you what's really happening with North Korea and why they're threatening to cancel the armistice. Now, I was born during the Korean War. I'm 62 years old, so right. we're talking about. Some Something that happened a very long time ago. And by the way, the, the war is never over. They had an armistice, but it's not armistice. a truce. They, they did not have they did not have a truce pact. So believe it or not, it's one, it's the longest war in modern history, or probably maybe in any history. The, the war has gone on sixty years. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. the third uncrowned communist king of North Korea, the latest Kim, um, he has said that uh, they could strike us uh, with their newer, smaller nuclear, thermal nuclear warheads uh, and that uh, they, they now have closed the airspace and sea space off both coasts of North Korea for drills. Uh, here's what's really ticked them off. Uh, about a month, a little over a month ago, they popped a nuke. They did a the third nuclear test, and they were right. told by everybody, including their big brother China, not China to do that. China, by the way, was the first one on the table to say, stop that damn nuclear testing stuff, which is really surprising because the Chinese who were playing both sides finally realized this is bad policy to keep supporting the crazy mad dog of North Korea. Well, the Chinese and the Americans for once did something really smart. We passed at the U.N. a, a, uh, a Security Council resolution that allows us to stop the flow of luxury goods through North Korean embassies. And this hits them where they live because the elite in North Korea, all the top generals and party officials, they're not starving like their people. They import through their embassies all kinds 
kinds of luxury goods. Ooh, and that's now we're going to cut that off. And that oh. is why they are so mad. They're absolutely livid. No CDs, no... Welcome back. That's uh, very shocking about North Korea. By the way, the Chinese are trying to distance themselves. That's why they're the first at the table to do this, because they know that South Korea is twitchy. They are armed to the teeth with bristling the most shiny, fancy nuclear weapons and targeting technology. They're within minutes of a tubeless rocket attack with more tubeless rockets than North Korea and fuel air bombs. The North Koreans are nuts. If they try to even think about attacking the South, the South will have to nuke them, and any nations that are allied with the North, even allowing material to get to the north to create weapons to attack uh, South Korea, in, that includes China, will be nuked. So the yeah. Chinese are distancing themselves, and that's a good sign. The Chinese are actually saying, this is bad for business. What the hell are we doing, allying ourselves with a crazy regime that's going to screw up our business and guarantee that if a conflict starts with the uncontrolled leader, Kim Jong-un, this idiot, this young idiot, and these maniacs at the top in North Korea, if they attack the South, the South is going to nuke them. They're going to nuke them, and anyone allied with them, they're going to nuke them as well. And we have Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan circled around Eastern Russia and the Soviet Union and all their affiliate nations and, and circled all around China. All Taiwan, of them, Japan, and South Korea uh, are nuclear armed nations. As, as of big course, nuclear armed, not, not little. China, We're talking about Japan, major, Russia. major nuclear powers again. Oh yeah. And I tell you, the third nuclear power is not Israel; it's Japan. This is a. Yeah. They have, this is they a, have an this is the ace card of Asia. Process plutonium. That yeah. uh, and, 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 and now, now let's let's. I, I think the the root of this though is the fact that the North Koreans are more than aware that uh, war theaters are being set up for the coming Third World War, and they see themselves as likely to go down, and they're 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 desperately they're maneuvering, and they're they're, they're they're nuts. I mean, the whole system is an absolute satanic nightmare. They've taken entire villages and made them into gulags, prison camps. It is the sickest society well, you know, you know, on I, earth. I, 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 well, our next door neighbors are South Koreans, and he owns a very wealthy man. He owns a South Korean uh, furniture manufacturer, very nice family. Uh, their children are highly educated. Their daughter is in her mid-20s. Koreans she's are brilliant like people. Brilliant. Some of the smartest people on earth, okay? And they're telling us, they're Christians, by the way, that in North Korea, if someone leaves North Korea and goes to the South and, and, they, and the North Koreans find out and know the name of the family, they put the entire family in prison forever. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so they try to destroy all the things. So if they get caught, they don't even have a photo of their family because if they can track them back to who the family is, they all go to prison. So the ones that escape can never contact their family because once the North Koreans know who they are, they put them in prison. And many times they just disappear or die. Well, they use prisoners to test biological weapons, chemical weapons, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and that includes right. children. I right. mean, the, the, but it, when this, is we, a, this, but this is probably the, the most reason, evil regime. I don't know how much got cut off when we were talking. But the reason that the leadership is so in, really ticked off about this latest uh, joint Chinese-American uh, uh, Security Council re resolution that's passed is we're cutting off the flow of luxury items, and that hits the so-and-so's where they live. Right. And I mean, we are talking about a monster, a tiny monster class at the top of this incredibly sick and crazy nation state, North Korea. And they're living the life of luxury while most of the people, they've literally had hundreds of thousands of people starved to death. Yeah. And uh, it, it's, it's the sickest country on Earth. Earth bar none. Anyway, it, 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 it's a potential hot spot. The Chinese don't want the, the, this little band of nuts influencing events. They don't want their agenda being hijacked by the, the nuts in North Korea. So they, they 
come together with the Americans and we've slapped them down and we'll see where it goes from there. But well, they're threatening they, a nuclear strike. They're actually, yeah, now here's, here's a fact, okay, just let's translate it. Let's say it's Tijuana and I live in North County, San Diego. If I knew for a fact that guys had missiles that could attack my home in North County, they had my GPS coordinates and they actually said we, we have your name and we're going to take you out and all your neighbors with weapons, it would be a matter of hours before me and a bunch of my buddies, including Marines, would go down there and we would kill them all okay so why do we tolerate north korea why do the chinese and the chinese are finally getting the message that having north korea a bad dog that's rabid on their border that they've been supporting and allowing so all these embassies all these materials to go there especially these fancy cigars and well DVDs our and fancy standard clothing. three missiles on, on navy cruisers and destroyers offshore and there are some offshore from where you live you can count on it right can take down the north korean incoming well, I know that. I mean, we, we, by the way, we have three layers. We've got what's called sea-based and land-based, uh, you know, sea and land-based to, to missile, missile hitting a missile target system. We've got what's called plasma-based weapon systems to create a plasma interferometry field that can hit it as it's going in the upper atmosphere. And we have space-based weapon systems that can hit it with a targeted energy beam, including aircraft, etc. So we have multi-layers of anti-missile system. The I fact think we may also have a scalar-based system. But no, that's what I'm first. So I'm talking the second one I'm talking about is a scalar based plasma weapon system. So we have theater air defense, which is far more advanced yeah, well, than Patriot not, 2. It's not plasma per se, but go ahead. No, That's no, all right. the, theater, the theater air defense is called THAAD, which is a missile to hit a missile. I know, I far know. more accurate. We have a plasma based, what's called interferometry system that can create a plasma field that goes to 100 megatons or greater. And we have a system that is space based weapons as well and high altitude aircraft that can generate with chemical lasers or particle beams, etc can t knock out virtually anything at the speed of light. So the fact is well, uh, that the tens of North Korea hitting us... took out seven of their, their test rockets, or several we, of their test rockets, all seven uh, seconds we burned into them, their launch. We burned them, literally, while they're on the <laughs> launch pad to an accuracy of centimeters. We yeah. literally fry the, the missile guidance system on the launch pad. So the North Koreans are completely maniacs, and they would not even get anywhere near America. We well, fry what them. they no, have I buried in the mountains just north of Seoul, so the capital and largest city of South Korea, are something like 11,000 uh, tubed and tubeless artillery uh, positions. That's the problem. Big problem. And with that, they have a, an enormous amount of fuel, air, explosive, FAE warheads, as well as chemical warheads. They could literally kill just about everybody in Seoul before they could get to their shelters. Now, the solution for that, and the solution, remember, they even have almost uh, just, uh, they have tanks from just after the Second World War, but they've kept them in very good condition. They're in caves all over Korea. And and, you know, when you're facing uh, 20 or 30,000 tanks, yes, some of them are really old, but uh, it takes a missile to take them out. And uh, they have the largest army uh, on Earth. Uh, well, I don't know. China may actually be bigger, but I mean, they it's have a hair millions. bigger. It's the Chinese enormous. army is the Chinese army is a hair bigger, and the army in Korea is so mind controlled. They're like robots. I well, mean, they'll march right into death. In the army, right? So the, the army in, in Korea in the is reserves. Is, is, yeah, but, but here's the thing. The, the way to fight the North Koreans is to shower them with thermonuclear weapons, and that's yeah, the strategy. Yeah, what will happen is they will be, they'll die standing, as it says in the Bible, with their tongues and their eyes dissolving to dust, in their, and, and their, they will fall in the open field. They will fall in the open field, and their towers and their missiles will vaporize into dust as directed energy weapons and other things hit them. They are done if they try to attack. Welcome back. I've got a big question. Uh, with all of this going on in Iran, why don't we have drones over Iran that are, quote, uh, proof that can't be brought down by Iranian intervention to kind of fly them down? Why don't we have drones over uh, North Korea to take out these bunkers of these elite? Why don't we well, fly I, from I'm space? Not, first off, I'm not convinced that... that uh, uh Unless you get into some something real exotic that uh, is top secret, I'm not sure that the average drone 
uh, can't be brought down. I believe that they're they're fairly vulnerable, even the uh, fairly stealthy ones. And I think the Iranians have proved that. Now, what the North Koreans have, I don't know. They 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 talk a lot and and do deals with the Iranians, so they may have uh, the knowledge that the Iranians have. My my, my but, guess is that here's what I think though. And this is a little different twist. I don't because I, I I think kind of laterally as well. So I I can figure out their twisted minds. General Atomics and Grumman Air Force Base, etc. Right here in North County, San Diego, make most of the the killer drones in the world. They're made right here in San Diego County. Uh, the ones that are being brought down are probably older technologies that can be fiddled with, can be hacked into, and so on. You can be guaranteed that America has more advanced generations of drones that can't be hacked, that are much more stealthy, that are much higher speed, and carry a lot more nasty weapons that can be operated at much higher altitudes that are well beyond the strike distance of a conventional ground-air missile or any other well, system. Well, the, the, the best are in, in literally in outer space. Right, and my point is that what what's going on is, then you ask the question of why don't we deploy them? For example, we're rattling again against Iran because they might have weapons, when in fact they probably have at least three to five nukes already because they're working with North Korea. But it, even if the Iranians could fire the Shahid missiles, Israel with its Green Pine radar system and its uh, and its Patriot two systems and everything else and the system they're developing with America. It's extremely unlikely that a missile, one or two missiles, or three or four missiles is going to make it to Israel. It's extremely no, they unlikely. Have to fire, they have to fire everything they've got. Because, Even if they did. Uh, Even if they did, they wouldn't. Okay, and, and here's the facts. We have, I'm certain, close to our Iranian strike zone, even ships within the Gulf or even the Mediterranean that could strike Iran with medium and long-range nuclear missiles from the Mediterranean and from the Persian Gulf that could strike Iran from right where they're sitting and could well, fry it, Iran to pieces. When, the fact when, is, when, when you look at all the firepower that's lined up and the counter uh, technology uh, that's available to both sides and so forth, uh, in an all-out engagement, uh, I guarantee you that a very large number of Syrian and Iranian missiles will get through. I also guarantee you that Syria and Iran will basically be uh, a cease sea to exist. of green terrarium glass, and they will, there they will, will not cease be to exist. living to bury the dead. No, exactly. Yeah. What, what you're saying is they, those nations will cease to exist. Now, what I well, think yes, is a little bit I, more... To a large extent, most of Israel will cease to exist. And, and, well, I, and, I, actually, uh, I'll tell you why I don't, I don't believe that quite. Because I think that Israel has... you got to remember now, Israel got into the security system for the National Security Agency. There's a back door for every secret black op project that Israel has total access to, and then they take that technology and further advance it. So they have their own space-based weapons platforms, Israel does. There are image sat satellites, and I know because I've talked to people inside uh, the Israeli I security, and I can tell but you remember that what any, we talked about, uh, any nation Bill. trying to attack Israel is facing annihilation. By the way, little Israel could take on the full Soviet Union and Russia and turn them into dust. Just Israel. Not talking about America or anybody else. Just Israel could take but, Russia, yeah, Russia, China. Russia could return the favor, but here's the thing. But they'll all cease to exist. It, it, well, here's the thing. It's kind of like this one uh, space movie, you know, where the guys come down from outer space and the bacteria or virus gets them. Well, the remember all the uh, Soviet uh, scientists that Iran hired 21, 22 years ago? Right. And the billions that Iran has put into the, the research program. It's it's a doomsday weapon system, and the way right. they've developed it is only as a doomsday weapon system, yeah. and that's why the Iranians are often so arrogant uh, in in dealing with the Israelis and the uh, and us Americans, is they know they've got this doomsday system, and they know they're prepared to use it. By the way, there's three questions that are asked uh, by agencies that listen to this program. Take the sound bites. Work down three questions. Who's on the program? What questions are asking? And how the hell do they know it? The fact is, when you raise these issues, Tim, when you talk about these intelligence reports and these things, they do have an embedded effect on our actions of our government and our agencies. Well, I hope so. I, you know, I really hope so because. Uh I, I'm not doing it just to scare our listeners. Well, I mean, well, but, they, but people need to realize serious. that war, war is obsolete. What we need to realize: if we attack Iran, 
they will pull the final thing. You know, like Israel was doing the Samson option, maybe we'll call this the Tehranian option. <laughs> They're going to pull out the super weapon from the biopreparat program, Syria and Iran, and it's over. We're going to see, we're talking about this movie coming out this 50, summer. 100, 150 Iranians that are deep cover Asians in the United States and some in Canada and maybe that many or more in Europe, and they get a coded message. And basically it means go to Allah, you know, take the stuff out of your freezer, add some uh, some water to it, put it in your fake cell phone, walk around the mall, go to a movie theater, whatever, uh, atomize uh, the viral material around people, and then uh, go home and, uh, you know, and do it again the next day and the next day, and in two weeks people start turning up dead. In the meantime, they're vectors for the disease, and you don't have a thousand people infected. You have uh, 20 or 30 million infected, and the next day it's, uh, it's, it's double that, and then it's double that, and you yeah, see the, remember, the remember the projections. You know, you you, right. you can't. Stop well, we did. We, I work with I work with the uh, with Operation Hazmat teams with the Operation Top Off and Dark Weather with the FBI, CDC, and FEMA as a point man under Reserve Admiral Hughes, and we had a uh, a war game simulation that we we bought time on the supercomputers for the National Weather Service up in Boulder, and we ran a simulation of a guy coming in from Cairo with a version, a weaponized version of smallpox, and we calculated based on the spread and biological activity and travel, that if you travel to Oklahoma City from Cairo, that within 90 days, 93 million Americans would be dead, and it would have spread to over 93 countries. Worldwide. Now, that's one disease. What if you have 100 viruses, some of which are, are probably considerably worse? Right. Now, here's the point. There's a movie coming out this summer, predictive programming, called the World War Z. But remember, the zombies are not the target of the war. It's the preppers. It's the, the patriots. It's the gun toting people who want to survive whatever cataclysm is coming. The government are freaked out by the fact they know there's extinction level events coming. And yesterday we talked about this with Professor McCanny. This is not the end of the world because we Christians know, like the sons of Issachar, the ancient prophets, and the Bible tells us, that God has to deal with Israel first. Israel is a nation that's returned apostate to the land. It's a fig tree without figs. And when Jesus saw the fig tree without figs, he cursed it and it died within a day. Israel is going to die shortly. And it'll be raised up, but it's going to have to be a fig tree with figs. It's going to be a real tree with real Torah Jews, with real resurrected uh, bloodline, you know, sons of Ephraim, with real it's grafted Christians. It's called the Christians. New Jerusalem, and it's in the Bible, the new earth. But it's also the new, also a physical new heaven and new Jerusalem. But God's going to have a physical people on a physical planet earth that are going to be living in the land that was given to Abraham. Now, what's happening is we're lining up with three major comments. We talked yesterday that, according to McCanny, the Oort Cloud, there's probably a red dwarf star that knocked a bunch of these comets in, and they're coming in this year. Three big ones. The biggest one is coming through in November that will travel 700,000 kilometers over the surface of the sun. That's going to cause a major solar explosion. Probably the biggest one in many centuries. And when yeah, that happens, they think it'll it will say, be visible during daylight hours. Well, not just, it'll just be brighter visible. Than the moon. This is this is just a brightness. We're talking about just a brightness as it goes along. I know. The, but it gets the, the sun. universe model says right. that that everything is a is right. plasma, now, and once it passes that close to the sun, it's going right. to trigger all kind of stuff, which is what you're now, talking. Now, about. there are amateur astronomers and ha- and ham radio operators that will be able to see the pulse. Because in eight and a half minutes, that pulse will travel to Earth, and within two and a half to four days, you'll get a major proton and plasma storm. They'll have to shut the grid off, which will give partial protection, because you can still get currents, even in equipment, radios, electronics, and cars. Yeah, if you don't have a Faraday cage. The wiring picks it up. Right. So what's going to happen is it could, is to say if it knocks out the power grid in parts of the world, if you happen to be unfortunate enough to be turned toward it, we're not going to go back to the Stone Age. As I said, the Stone Age will be like the Sandals Resort. This will be like the Ninth Ring of Hades. Welcome back, and uh, coming up tomorrow, we're going to have Ann Morrison, our special panel on preparedness, civil defense, martial law, earth changes, and it's one of the more popular hours. I believe this hour is uh, very important during the week, and of course, Tim contributes by putting up reports on our live stream channel and popping in on lots of other shows with emergency reports. Tomorrow, we're going to do a major update on volcanic activity in Popocatapetl, the Ambrin, Vanuatu, and Niragongo volcanoes that are active all over the world. We have sinkholes like this one that took uh, 
Jeff Bush, no relation to, I think, to the, the Bush family, that swallowed him up. It was very, uh, how can I say it, weird, where he's literally in his bed in Florida, and the sinkhole swallowed his his bedroom and the part of his house up, and they can't find his body. Uh, no. and, and we talked about this with the sinkholes all over the planet. These are the earth changes that are right in the Bible. Now, I'm not a negative person. I'm an optimist, which is why we do what we do. But people need to repent. If you don't have a conditional relationship, unconditional relationship with the Most High God, <coughs> and all of us are sinners, anybody who thinks that one saved always saves, you're also a fool because if you don't stay in relationship, you aren't. Okay? It's real simple, like being in a marriage. You can say you're married, but if you're sleeping around with everybody in your neighborhood, you're not married anymore. So just forget it, all right? So the same way we talked about they shall keep their clothes clean and shall not uh, be involved with other women. What the Bible is talking about in terms of the end time believers is they're not going to be involved with other satanic or other religions or Masonic orders or globalism or other lies. They're going to be basically clean. And lies is a good word for it because Satan is the father of all lies. Right. So what we're seeing now is all of these news stories, and we got a bunch of them. They're just amazing. We know with Iran sort of gravely threatening. You can look at this uh, guy, uh, Al Khamenei, this uh, this senior cleric in, in Iran. They're the ones that really call the shots. It's Ahmadinejad is like a little clown. And then we have the IAE report saying they want to advance more nuclear power, despite the fact that the danger is in TEPCO and in Japan. We got North Korea saying they're going to strike America with nuclear weapons. I mean, how suicidal, uh, and it just goes on and on. The craziness is just so over the yeah. top, and now China is backing these sanctions on North Korea, who is the main backer of North Korea. Their bad dog of China was North Korea, and the reason is that the China knows they got to switch their their alliances now, even though they're playing both sides. Well, when you they have know a group war of starts, they're going to get nuked. sociopaths that, that actually stand up as a, a sovereign nation state with nuclear weapons and uh, right. and threaten to uh, do a sneak atomic attack on the United States. Yeah. I what, mean, what do you think? What do you think of the United that's Nations? That's insane to make that statement. That's just that's saying we're going to kill you, but you can't kill us. Da 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 da. da. It's like, what do you think uh, of the uh, What do you think of the report though of these Al Qaeda terrorists that we've basically supported and armed and given intelligence? material and satellite connections have now seized UN vehicles in the Golan Heights and have said they give them 24-hour deadline before they treat the peacekeepers as prisoners of war. I mean, why well, do we tolerate this I, kind of stuff? I don't know. You know, I, I take everything I hear from that area with a grain of salt because the Mossad is is up to its armpits and everything, and you can't trust anything from there. Here, here's what I do uh, on my my. Well, blog no, well, I'll tell you what I hear. What I heard from my sources, uh, Tim, is this: is that Bashar al-Assad specifically withdrew from the area that allowed Al Qaeda, yes, that are American-based, to move in there. So that it would further create another front to withdraw the Israelis up there to deal with these guys because Israel isn't going to tolerate these characters, okay, up in the Golan. If they start shooting across at Gush Katif and other cities in the north or a Zidorot, they're going the Israelis will fry them, okay? They're just, there is they're an not article I linked today. Uh, I, in fact, I just linked it about an hour ago. Israel cannot stand idle by in Syria war. And right. essentially... That's exactly what Israel is saying. They're, Basically, they're, what's going to happen, if Israel has to, is to come into alliance with Syria to deal with a common enemy, which is al-Qaeda terrorists. Uh, Believe it or not, no, I, I strange don't think it'll, it'll, it'll well, Not, not a formal alliance. It won't be a formal alliance, but this is what Bashar al-Assad did very, very cleverly. He's forced Israel to deal with the same common enemy that's trying to take down his regime and wants to attack Israel. And they, yeah, and they, that's and they, true, and and see many of the individuals that are there are not exactly the brightest bulbs in the Middle East. They're these they're, are, they're poor, these are, uh, fanatic Muslims that poor, have been Muslims offered right anywhere from fifty to a hundred thousand dollars in gold, usually or cash, to well, go and, and plus, fight. But plus they hate now. Israel, but. They, they, they don't understand Israel's role in, in being in bed with all of this, but there they are on the border with Israel, and they're heavily armed, and their enemy far more than the Syrians is Israel. So right, it here's the point. a heck of a yeah. problem, and yes, Assad, I suppose, in some ways was, was smart to introduce that, but 
you know, it just... All the Israelis uh, have to do is drop a neutron weapon on them. To, it just adds gasoline to a, a raging okay. fire. Yeah. I talked to my uh, my guys. Vista, California is a place to grow any kind of fruit or vegetable because it never gets to freezing here, okay? It's a fantastic place to have fruit and nut trees. I can go down and pick off tons of oranges and grapefruit and everything any time of the year, winter time, Christmas Day, whatever. You're near, you're near San Diego, right? Right, we're north of it. We're in, and, and yeah, one of the jokes that whole is, area is, is wonderful. It's a it's a microclimate here, and literally what they say is Vista, which can grow almost anything. Literally, we got an arm, a, a, a farm that I can look out my window. Uh, you know, <laughs> where they literally strawberry fields forever, like the song, growing vegetables and everything. Literally looking out the window, but here it's a giant anthill. Now, when you talk, when I talk to my my uh, guy that gets rid of pests. There's ways to deal with ants. Now, if you deal with with Al Qaeda and all these maniacs here that have got all these weapons and think they're real toughs and they're brainless idiots that want their 72 virgins and they got their fifty thousand dollars in gold coins, they're going to die when Israel finally decides to drop a neutron weapon on them. Because if they think they're going to attack Israel without a response, if Israel thinks psychically they're going to do it before they even open the doors of their truck and set up their rocket launchers, they're going to die. Yeah, and, and Israel will use neutr- neutron weapons extensively. And, and to be honest with you, they're totally justified. Because as ba- bad as Israel is a satanic Sabbatean nation, there's a tiny kernel of Torah Jews. There's a 2% there that are genetically Jews. We talked about this in the first hour. We have a lot of Falasha and Ethiopian other Jews that really are genetically well, Jews. We, know, not the, we have the well, Palestinians there. Beings, and they don't want to die. And right, there's here's all the point. kinds of people in all kinds of countries. There's but, but, good but, and bad no matter where you go. There's what, smart and stupid no matter where you go. But, but there's something that's energizing that people need to know. The most evil and dangerous religious, anti-religious group, and it's not a religion, it's an anti-religion, is Islam. There's no such thing as moderate Islam. It's a lie. There's no such thing. If you're a Muslim, you have to believe in five pillars of Islam, which means you're against every constitution of every country you're in. It means you're against any other religious system. And it means in order to do Sharia law and whatever, you have to follow Islamic law, which means behead your enemies and lie to them and and taqiyya and all these other horrible things. So anybody who believes there's such a thing as mild Islam is crazy. And the people who call themselves Muslims and their accountants and other people and they'd like to do regular things of any other, they're not a Muslim. They might have come from a Muslim country. They may speak like a Muslim. They're not a Muslim. It's like somebody saying they're a Catholic, but they don't take the sacraments. Or somebody saying they're, they're a Protestant, but they do all kinds of things like go and have abortions. They're not. They're not a Christian. So Muslims, if you don't follow all of the laws and the five pillars of Islam, you are not a Muslim. If you're a Muslim, you're dangerous. Period. There's no such thing we, as a mild... I, I, we're about out of time. What I, I, I want to make a point here before I... I, I, I should have started this earlier, but... Uh, one comment I made on my blog a little while ago was the global banking cartel families are right. about to unleash maximum global chaos, war, yes. economic disease, tyranny, to usher in their satanic high tech, high tech police and slave state. You're talking about economic chaos, new right? world order. What you're saying is economic Eden, economic Eden, right? Yes. And while the churches of this world and their leaders stay silent on this, uh, it is the greatest moral imperative of our time, fighting this horror, which will end up killing billions of us. And I, I mean billions. There's seven billion of right. us. And if you look at what the Bible says, and the Bible is, is, is a definitive word, two-thirds are going to end up losing their life when all this process uh, is completed. Now, the yeah. timeline, you know, it, it, it we, we, but we're in it now, and increasingly in it. And, well, hey, uh, here's this report you link to, to an investment watch. We need to watch. stand up, and, and people need to, one, get right with God, and two, the people need to be aware of who's doing what, and the fact that Satan is, this is a war between Satan and God. Here's the headline uh, at the news article that's posted up on your site, uh, Europe Business, and I'll post up the link. First record Dow high, then record gas and grocery prices. Now stock markets ignore a 13-year high in French unemployment. Tumble in German factory orders. Rise in Spanish auction. Richard Russell, I've never seen anything like this in history. This is like the Lombardy collapse that preceded the Black Death. That's what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. and it doesn't need to happen. None of this needs to happen. None of it needs to happen. If we repay and repent, as God said, I will restore your lands and I'll heal it like in Second Chronicles. Get down to your face and pray. Check out my YouTube video. Absolutely. Amazing program today, Tim. Back tomorrow with Firing Line. Get your questions into Michelle. Call and place your orders now. 888-212-8871.